Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dan Pickett here at Launch Academy and I thought I would jump on this live stream and try to help those uh, that are struggling with Learn to Code. Um, maybe you are uh, uh, stuck on a coding challenge, ready to pull your hair out. Uh, if that's you, uh, this video is for you. So I'm going to share uh, five strategies for what you can do when you get stuck uh, learning to code. Uh, so the very first thing that I would coach you and advise you to do is to take a break. Uh, so one of the biggest challenges that we have as humans is sometimes the emotions just take over, right? And it's super intuitive I'm sure uh, and I know that you want to dive into the problem and just attack the problem but uh, as we've evolved uh, our brain has evolved with us uh, and the emotional sort of instinctual uh, part of the brain uh, is is there to serve one purpose right uh, that's to help us uh, way back in in prehistoric days to evade danger right um, and when that emotional side of your brain takes a hold of you it's really really hard to to leverage the higher functioning part of your brain uh, to actually solve the problem. Uh, that's called an amygdala hijack, actually. Uh, so it, when you're in that state and you're frustrated and your emotions are heightened, it's really, really difficult to look at the problem logically and rationally. Uh, so take a break. Step away from the machine. Uh, it's going to help clarify your thinking and it's going to sort of de-escalate those emotions. Uh, another thing that's sort of interesting about taking a break too, uh, for me, one of my strategies is I like to go out and take a walk. Uh, I like to get fresh air, uh, get away from the keyboard, get away from the problem uh, so that I can exercise some creative thinking. Uh, in fact, Steve Jobs, Zuckerberg, uh, uh, Jack Dorsey, they all really actually write quite a bit about this idea of taking walking meetings and uh, sort of getting out of the office to foster creativity. Uh, so taking a break can really help you uh, to clarify your understanding. The other benefit uh, that uh, is sort of interesting and, and sort of a bonus to this is uh, it's actually really great for your mental health, right? So uh, if you do take that break and you go out, get some fresh air and you take some walking, uh, that's going to uh, basically improve your mental health. In fact, uh, the Lancet uh, a Journal uh, of Psychology published an article where they said that 43% of folks that regularly took sort of moderate exercise, these small walking trips, uh, uh, reported that 43% of them had uh, less negative or bad days as a result. So really, really good for your mental health as well. Uh, secondly, and this is going to be kind of goofy, but uh, I'll give it a shot anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, you can rubber duck. So a lot of developers, they have these little rubber ducks, and mine's probably going to show up a little silly on the green screen. Um, but you can have a conversation with the duck and try to explain the problem that you're running into. Uh, something that I like to try to do and uh, focus on is to pretend that the duck is three years old. Uh, so I've got my uh, my daughter, Ella, you know, she's three years old, and uh, you have to explain things pretty simple uh, uh, for her to understand what's happening. Uh, and so if I picture my rubber duck as uh, three years old, I have to simplify the language. I really have to boil down the problem that I'm experiencing. Uh, so it's really, really important for me to express it in simple terms. And what I found is that that actually helps uh, me uh, better understand the problem because I have to boil it down to brass tacks. Uh, so rubber ducking can be a really, really useful and fruitful exercise. And it'll feel goofy at first, right? So uh, you're talking to an inanimate object, but from a problem solving standpoint, it can really uh, reap dividends and, 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 and really, really uh, help you out when you're stuck. Uh, secondly, uh, or thirdly, uh, you want to break the problem down, right? So uh, when you have this one huge insurmountable problem in front of you, it can be overwhelming. And that's when the emotions can start to kick in again and the frustration, right? Uh, so if you can break the problem down into maybe a half a dozen to a dozen smaller problems, well, then you can tackle smaller problem A, B, and C, as opposed to trying to uh, dive into this huge, big problem, right? Uh, 
Um, the other thing too, especially when you're learning to code, is it allows you to start from a place of confidence, right? So if you can find one of those half dozen steps where you feel particularly strong, maybe you're really good with looping, maybe you're really good with conditionals, right? Um, those, if you're able to break the problem down and, and, and start with what you know, it's going to build confidence, it's going to build momentum so that you can continue to work through the challenge and get unstuck. Hey, Andrew, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're here, uh, as uh, we dive into the last two uh, things and strategies for breaking the problem down, give me a shout in the comments. Let me know what your strategies are when you get stuck learning to code. Um, okay, so uh, for the fourth uh, strategy I want you to deploy is I want you to embrace the process. So this is really funny, but it always cracks me up uh, if you watch like CSI or maybe the movie Swordfish or uh, anything where like they, they try to uh, epitomize hacking as like this super action packed, like I'm typing code out faster than I can write an email kind of deal. And I'm sorry I, to break break this to you, but that is not uh, the process of software engineering. Sorry to bum you out, but you can't code and dance at the same time, uh, unless you're particularly talented. Uh, but you know, most of what software engineering is doing is thinking uh, and staring at the monitor and looking at the code and saying, okay, uh, this is what I need to do. This is how I need to get unstuck. Uh, so a lot of the a lot of software engineering is just dealing with and grappling with that uncomfortable place of not knowing all the answers. So embrace that. Uh, and secondly, from a learning standpoint, embrace the process. Right? If it was easy, everyone would do it. And one of the things that I love about learning to code and in in software engineering in general is there's always a new challenge. There's always something new to try. Right? So embrace the process uh, and just uh, em embrace the fact that this is all part of the learning process. So uh, the struggle is real, uh, but the struggle is also going to be where the growth happens. So embrace that. Lastly, uh, after you've exhausted all of these four strategies, it's time to phone a friend. Uh, so we here at Launch Academy really recommend having a posse, right? Having people that are going through this struggle, going through this challenge with you, uh, and that can relate to some of the difficulties with learning to code. And even better, if they're a little bit more experienced, they can share some of that experience with you and help you overcome the challenge too. Uh, and so much of Launch Academy's sort of learning philosophy philosophy and pedagogy is based on this idea of learning together. Uh, and we want to invite you all to uh, join our Facebook group, our Path Charters Facebook group, so that you can uh, kind of get into a posse and, and learn with the community uh, with us. We're also going to be hosting on November 8th a special event called the JavaScript Jumpstart. So if you're just learning to co how to code and you want to find that posse, you know, uh, be with a group of people, um, November 8th, we're going to get together and we're going to have three hours of learning to code with me. Uh, we're going to build rock, paper, scissors in a web application uh, using JavaScript. I hope you'll check us out uh, and kind of embrace that sort of perspective that learning to code is easier when you do it with a group and when you do it with a mentor. Uh, so I hope to see you. I'll make sure I uh, supply a link in the comments of the Facebook Live. Uh, Andrew, I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, and if you're watching this on recording, I hope it served you. Definitely let me know uh, if it was useful to you in the comments. And feel free, please, to share this. Uh, you know, we really want to get the word out about some of these new videos that we're going to be working with over the next few days. So I hope to see you on November 8th. I hope to see you in our Facebook group. Thanks and have a great night.